be taken around besides this Bahista Zahra, one of the biggest covered halls, I suppose, in Iran. 16,000 people, the Shah built it. To boost his Aryan myth, he was boasting not only that he was the Shahim Shah, the Shah, King of Kings, but he also happened to be, his own claim, Arya Mahar, the light of the Aryans. Now this Aryan sickness business, we haven't got the time to go into that, it would be another subject. What is this Aryan, Aryan business? Our Hindu cousins, the Desais and the Patels, they say we are the Aryans. If we were not Muslims, these Gujarati Muslims, you know, my people, we would have been boasting we are the Aryans. The ex -shah, the dead Shah, he was boasting he was the light of the Aryans. What is all this Aryan business? It's another subject. But he had built this as a monument. He had built another monument, costing millions to commemorate a monument to Cyrus the Great, a pagan, a mushrik. His ancestor is boasting and priding about his ancestor, Cyrus, a pagan, a mushrik. In his honor, he had a monument built costing millions, squandering the wealth of the nation. This huge project, and that's in, in 1984, he was supposed to have the Olympics, World Olympics in Tehran. Boost his ego to say that, here you are, you see what I'm doing? We went and saw in this cover hall, athletics, acrobatics, and wallah, you know, our people, you know, we are like jellyfishes. We have made ourselves into jellyfishes. We do not participate in any of that kind of activity, what I saw there. Who does physical culture? Who does karate? Who does acrobatics? Not we, that's not for us. That's for the higher form. Who does jogging? Ghair form. And when I shake hands with my own young men here, you know, like jellyfishes. <laughs> Almost every young man you meet there in Iran, you know, he appears to be an athlete. You know, when you shake hands with him, you feel that you're shaking hands with somebody. Not jellyfish. Now, whatever they did, those acrobatics we saw, on world standard, and it makes you feel happy because they were not projecting Iran, that we are Iranians, we are Iranians, not at all. They're talking about Islam, about Islam, about Islam. There was not one semi-naked girl to do any feat for you, not one. Not a single one. Whereas under the Shah, if the Shah had his way and if he was alive, and if he had organized that gathering, whew, it would be, you can imagine, Every Iranian daughter of ours, what you saw here on the screen, so beautifully attired, they would have made semi-naked for people to stay and feast upon. Everything Islamic. Strengthening the morale of the people, boosting them, men and women, you know, by the thousands, the 16,000, the place was too small. We were thrilled. Wallah, we were thrilled to see our own children. So as we know, we feel that these are our own children, our own boys and girls, our own brothers, doing the things that we felt that only the Germans can do, you know, the top grade athletes. Then we witnessed the military parade. Hours on end, young men, the Allahu Akbar, passing through different, different groups of armed young men, and there seem to be no shortage. There is no shortage of manpower. You know, if some of our young men feel that we'd like to go and help our Iranian brethren, they don't need any manpower. Alhamdulillah, they have enough manpower to do the job. They only want the tools, the weapons. They are making do with what they have. But if they had the same sophisticated weapons as the Israelis have, Wallah, the whole of the Middle East would be freed from every type of foreign intervention in no time. This is a nation that can do it. The spirit is there, the spirit of jihad is there in each and every man and woman in the country. It seems that the whole nation is involved. When they're talking about 20 million people that they can put into the field, it looks like they're able to do that. If they have the weapons, the material, 20 million they can put into the field. 
In other words, every man, woman and child would be prepared to go and do jihad.